Welcome back to Ubad's lab and today I'm going to be making sugar crystals using a couple of different methods and then eating some of it at the end. So what we're going to be doing is basically taking sugar and then recrystallizing it to get uh, more of a clear product which is going to be like rock candy. And uh, it's nice to understand where this sugar came from. So I'm going to be going over the process of extracting sugar from uh, sugar cane. And uh, basically how this process works is that you extract the cane juice from the sugar cane by grinding it up and then you add calcium hydroxide and you also pump some uh, carbon dioxide into it as well and then it's uh, boiled down to extract any of the excess moisture to uh, basically get rid of uh, all of the water and then it's uh, this very thick liquid which basically contains most of our uh, sugar and then it's crystallized uh, basically it's cooled down in a container where it has nucleation sites for the crystals to grow and then we have our sugar and then what we're going to be doing is uh, recrystallizing it so basically repeating these steps we boil it down and then cool it down in a container and then we hopefully hopefully have some pretty cool looking uh, rock candy crystals which I'll taste and uh, we'll see how that goes alright this is the um, easiest equipment list I've had yet uh, basically, you just need sugar and water for this experiment, and uh, the sugar can be either white sugar or brown sugar. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I use white sugar though. And then uh, water, preferably distilled water. It's gonna be a bit more pure, and uh, it's gonna work better. So I'm gonna be setting up a couple of different trials while making these sugar crystals. So as you can see, I already set up my first trial. And this one's gonna be cooling in room temperature, while this trial is gonna be cooling in a refrigerator. And we'll see, we'll be seeing which one's most optimal. And um, for this trial, uh, the first step is going to be adding 200 grams of sugar to a beaker, and then 65 milliliters of water, and then boiling it until the solution becomes clear and all the sugar dissolves. So it's gonna look like this. And then once you do that, you're gonna wanna prepare, uh, I have a mason jar, you can use any type of cup, glass, beaker, and a popsicle stick, and then a, st a string tied to it. And you don't want the string to touch the bottom, just hang. And uh, I dampened the string and coated it with some sugar, so it's a nucleation site for the crystals to actually grow on. And then, uh, once you have that, you can pour your solution of the boiled sugar and water into the jar. And this beaker I'm going to be throwing into the refrigerator for around 8 hours or so. Alright. And hopefully we should have some pretty nice sugar crystals grow. All right, and I set up one more jar. Uh, and the variable I changed in this jar is basically changing the concentration of the sugar. So um, instead of having 200 grams of sugar and 65 milliliters of water, in this one I'm using 200 grams of sugar and 80, 80 milliliters of water. So it's a bit more dilute and we're gonna see how that affects the crystal growth. All right, these are the crystals that have been cooling in room temperature, and they came out pretty well. Uh, as, you can, as you can see, these are the crystals that have been growing in the side of the jar, and mostly on the bottom. And then over here are the crystals that have grown on the string. And um, we'll see how it compares to the uh, refrigerated solution uh, once that's uh, cooled down. I'm gonna let that sit in the refrigerator for around 24 hours. Uh, this one's been sitting in room temperature for around eight hours. All right, so I finally took out the crystals that have been cooling down in the refrigerator. 
and let's see how they turned out. These are the crystals that grew um, around the string. Came out pretty well, a little bit better than the, uh, the room temperature one. And then the crystals, oops. And then the crystals in the jar are just about the same as the room temperature one. I'm also taking the mass of these, and at the end of the video, I'm gonna be comparing the rate of crystallization uh, grams per hour uh, and see how it compares uh, between each trial. All right, I just finished crystallizing uh, the last trial that was a diluted solution and I used 80 milliliters of water instead of I believe 65 that I used last time. And uh, you can see quite a difference in the crystallization in this one. Uh, as you can see, there's almost like a sheet of crystals on the top and then there's like another layer of crystals on the bottom and there's no mountain of crystals on the bottom like they formed in the others and also on the string we had a bit more crystals than usual All right, I laid out all three uh, final products from the three different trials that we did. So uh, here are the crystals that were cooled down in room temperature. Here are the crystals that were cooled down in the fridge. And here are the crystals that were uh, cooled down in room temperature, but diluted. Um, so I also uh, recorded the mass uh, and the amount of time that they uh, crystallized for. So I was able to um, calculate the rate of crystallization for all three trials. You can see that it goes uh, in a decreasing order from uh, left to right. So the room temperature one had the fastest rate of crystallization at 3.78 grams per hour and the fridge cooled one was at 0.82 grams per hour and the diluted one was 0.41 grams per hour. So I'd say if we're going for the fastest crystal growth, and the most crystals definitely go for the room temperature one and um, we can also see some differences in the shapes of the crystals the uh, room temperature ones kind of clump together and uh, they're pretty uh, medium sized the fridge ones are the smallest so if you're interested in that definitely um, definitely go for uh, cooling it in the fridge and uh, the diluted ones had the most unique crystal growth. I'd, uh, I'd definitely recommend trying this one because they came out looking like uh, pieces of glass. Uh, they're all uh, thin pieces of crystal. I really like how the diluted trial came out. All right, it's time for the taste test. Um, I'm probably going to opt for one of the fridge crystals since they are the smallest and I don't want to have too much. Uh, here's the biggest fridge crystal that I was able to form and this is the one I'm going to try. Alright. I mean, it just tastes like sugar. <laughs> There's nothing really to it. I mean, recrystallizing it definitely makes it like rock candy. I definitely do some pretty cool stuff with it, especially if you add some like food coloring. It definitely turn out pretty cool. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I do a lot of cool chemistry related things that I think you'll enjoy. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time.